Welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. So you can see I've got this kind of unusual setup here. Um, I sort of channeled this setup. So I, I sussed out the decks and I grabbed the trusty bucket of charms here and uh, this is this is how it do. So I'm using the elemental hexagons again I'm using the charms I'm using the mini mini rider weight here and the Radley Valentine angel deck I just trimmed mine I got the raggedy edges off it it's like a lot of the silver was just scraped off so I just I cut it down it's a little easier to shuffle now crisp edges again because mine's been used a little bit more than my other decks because I got it second hand. Um, <sighs> sorry, I'm kind of out of breath. Um, we got the Gilded Reverie Lenormand here. I have my phrase deck that I made. Index cards there. Or not index, um, invitation cards. And I didn't want to use, but Gabriel insisted on the Work Your Light Oracle. He's like giving me that like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, kind of kind of energy. So I wanted to just show the spread because I'm not really going to be showing it. So essentially, I've got these cards laid out. They got the Work Your Light and the Phrase decks are in pairs, and they're set up in this semi-humanoid frame here. And then I've got what looks like some weird cross-dimensional time shift over here. So I've got the uh, mini rider weight going across, going across the um, angel deck here. I've got I thought I thought these Lenormand cards were going to be diagonal, and then this card insisted on being here. It is in the challenge position, and then this card fell out on top of the elemental hexagons when I was trying to sh um, pull these cards out. Um, so I was going to put it on the hexagons, but then it was like, no, you need to put it over here. And then I've got these charms here. I closed my eyes and I was like, okay, I'm going to pull three of them. And then the watch fell on the floor, so I just put that on the deck here. Um, so I've got a stegosaurus, I've got a shark, and I've got a fish. So obviously there's some kind of evolutionary aspect coming here uh, in in dealing with time. And then there's a the diagonal that was supposed to be here, but there's a different one instead. And now this is over here, and there's sort of an aligning going on, but it, there's a, a challenge. So I have no idea what Gabriel wants to talk about. He's been on me for... A couple weeks to do this. It took me a while because I knew that I was gonna have to do a portrait like I did with Uriel and you know between being busy and not feeling well it took me a while to get to get in there so I'm gonna move the camera and all right so this is the portrait that I drew of Gabriel I'm gonna zoom in on that hopefully without shutting this off He's not picking his nose. He was supposed to, um, he's laughing at me about that. He's supposed to have had his hand on his, like resting his chin on his hand there. Like, you know, as one does. And, uh. I'm just trying to get it focused better. It looks kind of weird. Okay. So, um, this is Sharpie on printer cardstock. It's actually the exact same cardstock that I used to make these. Um, and I mean, I had like sketched it in graphite. So, Gabriel wanted to look like. He was giving me like Renaissance, like he's like, I want to look like Italian like in the Renaissance. And he was giving me this sort of 
like the vampire Armand vibes, like in in uh, in the Renaissance, there, sort of youthful, like um, Botticelli's Mercury, which I think is on the cover of the Vampire Armand, but it's currently underneath some dolls, so I'm not gonna move it. Um, but then he was giving me this cross cross reference of sort of like 80s metal. So he's got a studded vest on and his hair is a little bit teased, but it's still in these sort of flowing curls. And I was thinking if he's going to look Italian, I was going to give him these like, um, I was, I was thinking of his eyes like, um, Byzantine mosaics, but I wanted him to look a little bit less high. So I tried to like tone down the, like the heaviness of the lids. But he looks like he's touching his nose, like, like he's uh, doing magic, or like a, like signaling to people, like like, like a stage whisper. But it also kind of looks like he's like moving his hand to speak, which is typical of Gabriel. Why is there a smudge on here? What the shit? It must have been from erasing the pencil. Um, is that still in focus? So, um, his, I stylized his wings. I based them on my drawing Swan, which is on my Deviant Art uh, page. It's in my Psychedelic Gallery, and also the line, Sharpie line version of it is in my Drake, my, not the Drake of Horn, the Energy Forms coloring book. Sorry, I'm failing at speaking. I'm doing my best. Um, so I, I'm still not sure what he's going to say. I'm going to leave it focused on him. Uh, I, I debated coloring this in and it wasn't just that I didn't want to take an extra like three or four hours because this took two hours as it was. Um, I wanted to, like, I didn't want, I didn't want to color it in and I think he looks good as is. So, you know, if I sold prints of him, people could, in theory, color them in on their own. Or I might have to do, like, a whole angel coloring book and include that somehow. But I was going to make a coloring book for the, uh, for the Oracle deck. Which would be, in theory, a different picture of him, but I, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, cause I haven't, I haven't even opened my tablet yet. I got it over a month ago to, to work on my Angel Oracle deck and I still haven't taken it out. It's, it's been a, it's been a minute. It's been a rough minute. So I'm going to start getting into these cards now that I have talked about what's going on here. Um, you know, so it, it's just sort of, a lot of the time, well, it, I think the only entity that I was going to channel that sort of, like, was like, never mind, I'll get the next bus, was George Harrison, because I was supposed to do him, like, November, and then I just kind of had system failure of all kinds going on and I, I didn't but that was on the back of like three other channelings so he's probably gonna come back around at some point but uh Gabriel's been been around for a couple weeks and he was patient and then <laughs> there's a, a point where I cranked out the drawing and then it's been like another five days, so I'm actually doing this reading now. Even though I'm tired. I got sort of like depressed and I had a feeling that today was going to be the day and I just needed to regroup a little bit. And then I get this sensation of being like bored and lonely and I was like, God, I really want to hang out with somebody. I'm like, well, I guess I could hang out with Gabriel. Even though I'm going to be doing all of the talking into the camera but he's it's it's sort of like he's anchoring his energy in into the drawing to make it easier to be in this plane um it's sort of like a it's sort of a newish thing 
for these channelings. I mean, I always sort of imagine it as being in a studio, uh, you know, in a headset and a mic talking to them in, a, in like a little booth, like behind some glass. But this is, uh, you know, like he's over there. I can hear him or see him or whatever he wants to like images that he puts in my mind and he's he's just there because I mean if, like if I try to concentrate on him talking to me it's just going to be my own voice in my head anyway uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to change the battery before I actually start reading cards so I better get that done so when I was changing the battery I started thinking about how some people say Gabriel appears as feminine to them, and I was thinking about how kick-ass Tilda Swinton was as Gabriel and Constantine. I wasn't really aware of the graphic novel until some years after that, so I was just like, God damn, this movie's awesome. Um, so I don't know how it compares to the source material. But I always see him as, as masculine, even though he's you know, in the robes with the long curly black hair. But, uh, I guess a lot of people see angels as blonde, but it's, it's, uh, not a rope for me. Um, oh yeah, he, and he was, when I was, sh uh, shuffling out the cards and trying to lay them out, he was giving me a bunch of scenes from the Highlander movies, which I, received for Christmas, so I was re-watching them recently, or I don't know if they, well, maybe they were birthday presents, but whatever, it's close enough. Um, so I think some of that has to do with timelines as well. Oh, I know, he, I, when I started, he, I heard him say, it's better to burn out than to fade away. And I don't, I don't think he was presenting that as, like, you should this is the advice I'm giving you. He's presenting it as a concept that exists. That there's some people that come into this life and they, they're they not al around for very long, but they have a huge impact on society. And I think he's sort of alluding to these charms with the, the stegosaurus and the shark. And the fish here, because it's it's like a squeezing point that changes the consciousness. I probably said that with a lot of ah. It's like suddenly turning to my grandparents. Consciousness it alters the points of consciousness and shifts the development of human beings. And of course. On the elemental hexagons, the little wristwatch, which is again this idea of like how much time do you have? I feel like I'm kind of on a slow burn, even though I feel like my I've used up like seventy five percent of my fuel and have a lot longer to go, but we'll see. You know, it's just this idea of concentrating energy into something instead of just sort of flopping about wondering what the hell you're doing. Mm. Okay, so let's look at this sort of head area of the person. So we have unbound Releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. Is that... I don't know if that's too far away. Let's see if I can get in a little bit more. Okay. Just like, don't cover me up. And then 38, don't hate the player. So what's interesting is I see the Empress number I see the eight, which is, I, I'm seeing it more as infinity, but like infinite time stood on its end. 
And this three is the infinity stood on its end, but it's broken. It's like... There's like a time loop that's being torn open. But I see the 11 behind that is universal timing. Now this 108 that I've written on this card is just the page number that the that it's in in the little manual. And normally I ignore the, that on cards I've written on, like when I use um, the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. I've got the page numbers written on the cards, and usually I ignore those as well. But here I see the 108, and it's like almost the same green color as the card. And I was thinking of... Um, the hell is it called? The fifth element. Like in the middle of the action, they have the guy who's like, Hell, 108! Um, so because there's a fifth element reference, I'm going to have to get the fifth card out of this deck, but I'm not going to do that right now. The elemental hexagons. Helm 108. So there's a 9 there, but there's the 10 is the wheel. And then the other 8, the infinity. It's like turn. Like we're, we're moving through this Mobius strip. Hmm. But don't hate the player. And it says releasing soul patterns, contracts, and past lives. So then there's, again, past life is, especially when you consider that there is a shark and a dinosaur on the board. We're talking about hundreds of millions of years. You know, it's like, don't hate who you are right now, but don't hate other people who you're playing against. Don't shit on the entire Monopoly board and like an angry pigeon. Because you're, you've done it to learn stuff, but now is the time to open up that infinite loop of crap and switch tracks. Okay, Gabriel, what do we want here? We're looking at the left hand. I rule with my left hand, I rule with my right, I'm lord of all darkness. I'm Queen of the Night. That's March of the Black Queen by Queen. It's my Empress card. Okay, so this is coming in kind of inverted. Birthing a new age. Birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. I was trying to ask him while I was talking. I was like, why is it inverted? And he's like, you're, you're asleep. It's like, you're not dreaming. He's like, the brain waves aren't the right frequency. It's like, you, you have to go down a few more levels, like, into the, the bedrock of the subconscious. For that kind of dream. Dude, I think I've been there lately. Okay. Troublesome, frustrating goblins all up in your work, undoing your labor. Although occasionally goblins are helpful. So we have number seven. He's like, he's saying nose goblins because it looks like he's touching his nose here. Like it's the most hilarious thing in the world. Gremlins. He's also, he's also saying born breach. Like you're not being born because you're like breach. But it's this idea of what is the left hand? He keeps he keeps showing me the binding of Isaac. It's like at a certain point, no matter how 
much work you put into creating something new if you're still bound to these old energies of being emotionally and pattern wise entangled with other people it's like they think you know they're like oh let's like I wanted this wall green and you're like god damn it I, I painted this wall purple yesterday and every day you come in, it's green again. It's like, what the shit, man? I have to start all over. It's like, it, your tracks are moving in different directions, but there's still this, like, entwining happening that's preventing this, like, exponential increase that results in in the pressure to, for this, like, quote-unquote, new age to drop into the physical from the energetic. I just heard, like, let your flag unfurl. I just heard right foot red, although there isn't red here, it's green. Let me see what this is. So we got play, have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious. Coming in in the same area as don't hate the player. Reconnect with ancestors and all, with a side comment of shamanic lore number 357. Completion broken in uneven parts with a five in the middle suggesting a pivot. Devil energy total could result in healing which is why the card is green apparently. What are you saying with these cards? Why is it in the right foot? <laughs> so you, want, you don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Oh my god. You gotta start off on the right foot. The left foot is the future, the right foot is in the past, where the ancestors are. If you have fun and celebrate without being serious about what you've been through, instead of getting pissed off at this game of the soul going through different lessons, especially when it's tied to a group where you're all working on like different parts of a quest, right? You're all building sections of the puzzle. It's like one fucking piece is missing, but it's like, don't stress out, like chill. And when you release yourself, it releases the ancestors from their own binding because all time is current. Like, all, all timelines are connected, which is why this section of cards with the, with the time area on it is all crisscrossed. It's the, the radio signals going out in all directions at the same time. Once you, you take a minute and relax about the whole experience, it sends out uh, a, like a tide pool you know it's like you go by in your boat like woo I'm, I'm, I'm having fun and then your ancestors over here floating in the water get to ride on the waves on their their pool floaties now he wants the left foot so I know this is the 37 card because it's bled through Right, so it's taking that five out. Now the completion can merge together because we've dropped this sort of conflict out after having shifted direction. So we have Akasha, your guidance is divinely guided. Accuracy is accurate. He's like, Dahoy. 
he's like, I could have read it to you out of the book, but you wouldn't have learned anything if you hadn't done it yourself. He's... He's saying being the angel of enunciation is kind of ridiculous sometimes because half his job is just saying, I told you so. <laughs> He's an old nag. It's like old doesn't even begin to cover it, he says. All right, so let's look at this right hand. He's like, I'm not a southpaw. Unexpected and silent movement. He's... <sighs> He's giving me a little bit of, like, he who smelt it dealt it because he's, like, trying to cover his nose, right? He's, like, a silent but deadly. I did not expect fart humor from the Angel of Annunciation, but there it is. All right, you said the rhyme, you did the crime. He's like, they're always blaming it on me. Like, don't shoot the messenger. Imrama, where are you being called to journey to? I like how this... Blue is similar to the blue over here. He's like, I just blew my nose. He's sassy today, tonight. He's working on his stand-up comedy. It's like floating down from the heavens comedy. Oh, he's pulling my attention to the fact that there's a triptych door over here in this building. Mm -mm. Unexpected and silent movement. It's like you're moving through a portal. But it's, again, it's like, this is an ancestor that's been, like, in the little tide pool. And, like, when you go by in your boat out here, like, the waves come in and they're actually fairly quiet by the time they get in here. And they just sort of uh, let the tide carry them in. So the ancestor that's been, you know, caught in the lagoon for you know, their slice of eternity. Suddenly, and very quietly, when those little aftershock waves bring them in, they're like, oh my god, I'm, I'm suddenly closer to the portal. You know, it's like, if you open yourself up to universal co-creation, you might not have expected to go here to this particular gateway, this double gateway here, and that looks like it's in Jordan, or I think Jordan is where they have those, those cut cliff buildings. Um, you know, it's like, well, while you were looking down to check the map, you've arrived at your destination, but you, you maybe thought you were going to Chuck E. Cheese, but here you are at a five-star restaurant that doesn't have germs and screaming children and animatronic rats. So there. All right, let me do another section. That's, that might have seemed a little bit judgmental, but hopefully people knew what I meant. I'm going to do another section and try to get into the timeline aspect. I feel like this reading is going a lot faster than I thought it would. And he's like, see, you're getting, you're getting pulled into an unexpected... Oh, you're being pulled in somewhere unexpected. He just pointed out to me that I didn't do the sacral chakra portion of this little chunk person down here. All right. So you have Ancestral Rites of Passage, 63. Dance with life. Do something to change your energy. Okay. He's saying that the whole point of, of rites in ancestral cultures of all kinds is all of the rites, all everything that people did was conscious of energy. Like, why are you doing this elaborate dance? Why the the bells and the rattles and the drums and the fringe and the feathers and all that? It's, it's not even necessarily 
they're trying to look fancy or want to look like a, a bird or a thunderbird or whatever. It's These are the elements that resonate in a certain way that are designed to change your energy, whether it's costuming, uh, something that makes noise or music, um, colors, herbs, tactile thing, textile thing, flavor, color, shape. It's all designed to do something to an energy to present a concept and to move something forward. So it's it's like being, it's sort of like if you were imagining yourself, you know what I mean, floating in, essentially in a womb, right? You're in water, but it's sort of like warm jello, or it's a little bit thick. And you can sort of push it around and make it do cool stuff just by f moving your arms around. You're like to the point where you get to this sort of advanced stage like dolphins where they can blow rings in the water. You know, you can make shapes, you, and then you can start altering the color of the environment. And pretty soon you end up in your whole tank of goo ends up looking like a Van Gogh. Even here, this dance with life, there is there's like a Japanese sand garden underneath here. They're combing the energy, right? Taking all this pile of sand back here and raking it, which he's saying he's giving me this idea that raking raking the sand with a rake and reiki the energy work has a similar like meditative origin. So things that we have sort of secularized and desacrify, like things that are no longer sacred, not in necessarily in a religious way, but in a like a mindfulness way. Or things that you can do to change your energy. Right? And like I have not had, it's like I have been eating chicken nuggies for eight weeks and you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to have uh, like crepe Suzette or something because the flavor is different and it'll change my energy, right? It's sort of like stimulating the brain out of stagnancy. It's like you do something repetitive enough, your behavior becomes subconscious and you're no longer functioning, right? It's like if you're doing a really boring repeat task after a while, you can only do it in a certain order because you're no longer thinking about it, right? You got your driver's license, you studied hard, you worked really hard. 20 years later, you're just kind of like, you don't know how you do it anymore, you just do it is why people probably get bored and like text and call and do their homework and brush their teeth in their car but you're not supposed to um you got to do something to change your energy right you gotta make your music loud or open the window or stop using the cruise control to change your energy enough to bring some kind of mindful focus back to it you know it's like i have to like i have to like i consciously chose to peel carrots with my left hand so that the blades on the peeler would wear evenly and did it so many times that it's subconscious now and I can no longer peel carrots with my left hand with my right hand all right that's something that happened to me so if I want to change the energy I have to focus really hard on how to peel carrots with my right hand okay so that's the kind of thing. It's like anything can turn into some kind of right to pass from one energy into another if it's done in a conscious and mindful way. And that's coming out of a sacral energy, which has to do with safety and creativity. It's the battery pack for the solar chakra.
prop him back up a little bit. He's sliding on the table. Is he still in focus? He looks pretty good right there. I need to scan him, too. Um, okay, so let me... So we already know that we're talking about time. Again, this watch fell on the floor. Right? It's like... Like, throw down this concept of 12 hours, right? Even a broken watch is right twice a day. And we've got another one coming around. We're not concerned with what time is it every second of every waking moment. He's also, he's, he's telling me that pandemic has a lot to do with shifting people's concept of time, right? A lot of people are like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I don't know who I am. And it has a lot to do with this consciousness shift that's coming in with all this Aquarian energy here at the beginning of 2021. Um, it's, it's, he's, now he's giving me a little bit of the time warp from Rocky Horror, right? Get into the time slip. Let's do the time warp again. He's, he's, I was going to skip the part of the song where it's like, it's the pelvic thrust that really drives me insane. But he's laughing and telling me that coming off of the sacral chakra energy, that's exactly the kind of thing that shifts the energy, right? The, the thrust from the sacral energy to change something can drive people insane if they're not conscious. They're not doing things mindfully. So let me get the fifth card down from the top of this the elemental hexagons, right? Because I was talking about the fifth element. One, a two, a three, a four, a five. Mm -hmm. Going right into the third eye here. Copper. The eye of Horus. Hey, look, there's Venus's symbol. That's the Empress right there. So we have copper, number 29. So that's the high priestess in the the Hermit. I was honestly going to say the Hierophant. <clears throat> He's giving me the future so bright you gotta wear shades. So it's Conductor, Horus, Venus. Oh! It says right on here, number five, the Hierophant. So when I was saying nine is the the Hermit, and I tried to say the Hierophant, I wasn't even reading that down there. I've only gone over these cards once. So I haven't gotten this card yet when I've been shuffling it. Periodic Table Royal Medals. So copper. Okay, he's showing me how people use copper the same way that they use magnets in, like, clothes and stuff to, like, in, um, compression stockings. It's, like, used to shift the energy to change the frequency for healing. Copper tone. And it's sunblock. I'm not gonna fry. I'm reducing the radiation. Right, it's like, um... But not in a bad way. It's like I'm... I'm using this to... curve... disharmonious vibrations around my energy field so that they don't enter through it. Whew, that was a long walk for that one. He's telling me Duracell the copper top. Anything else coppery you want to tell me about? He's showing me this copper dinosaur that I made when I was in high school. It's like a sculpture. But he's also showing me copper plates for etching. But there, I mean, there's this idea that royal metals aren't supposed to rust either, right? It's, it's like reducing oxidation, like free radicals. It's that same kind of idea. Like what I just said is probably not completely scientifically accurate. Scientifically accurate duck tails. I also have a scientifically accurate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, too. Um, he's also showing me a copper sheet being um, 
rattled to make thunder, like a sound effect. And I'm thinking, I thought they used something else. He's like, no, you can't use aluminum because the tone isn't right. Interesting. Okay. All right. So let's look at, I mean, I kind of already went over the stegosaurus and the shark and the fish as being related to evolution. He's, he's also saying to me morphology. Like the same basic framework can be used to create different patterns. Right? Like, like if I've got, I've got my four limbs, I've got a spine, I've got a head, I've got a tail. In humans, the tail is compressed, but it gives this idea of somewhat, well, it's more the root chakra, but it, for today's purposes, it's coming in with the sacral. But again, there the there's like a backbone, like I have some kind of confidence in my form expression. With a shark, they don't really have back legs. They've been sort of absorbed or not present, but their their spine is more articulated. In theory, I mean, there's their skeletons made out of cartilage, so it's kind of moot. But they have a head, and they have limbs and the tail again. And then with the Stegosaurus, we see tail. We see a lot of action going here on the spine, and then the four limbs, and then the head again. So it's and then with people, there's the hands and the feet and the spine and the head. And then again, we don't have much of a tail. And it's these idea of form expressions. It's like when you change the energy signature, it's like if you took an embryo of one of these things and radiated it with a certain shift of energy, you would, th like, if you... If you, inc if you, if you put a lot of radiation into an embryo, it can mutate. We we know this. As Kate McKinnon says, we know this. But depending on what kind of vibration you put through it. If you don't want just like nuclear fallout, if you want a different kind of vibration, maybe something that's getting a good cymatic resonant pattern, you might be able to evolve something instead of mutate it into something that isn't functional. So that's that's what he's showing me there. All right, so let's look at these. <clears throat> now, this came out with the elemental hexagons, it says we're heading in the right direction, right? This is essentially talking about evolution. It's just a comment on this ongoing situation. Gabriel is also tying that right direction thing back into the other cards from the same deck where it's like, you can't you're having trouble moving forward into the direction you want to go because of entanglement that you're hanging on to unnecessarily because of it's, it's essentially coming in he's like don't be afraid to say that it's it's not revenge it's I said grudge thank you he said don't be afraid to say that it's a grudge if it's a grudge like because of a grudge being held against you know essentially traumas soul growth trauma situations it's like i haven't been able to move forward and 
it's clearly everyone all up in my gears. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at the watch. Right, but here it's like when you shift the energy, you experience this evolution where it's like, oh, I, I don't, I don't need this appendix full of goblins. Now I'm going where I want to go. Alright, so I'm going to look at this cross pattern here. Let's look at the center. Okay. So we have nine of earth inverted. Nine of pentacles inverted. Right, so we're not reading the card right now. We're just looking at it. Oh, it was in the Nine of Cups that I was thinking of, wasn't it? Yeah. Where is it? No. Maybe it was the Nine of Pentacles that I was thinking of. Interesting. Okay. I was having a dialogue with myself the other night. So we have Five of Wands inverted. Oh, excuse me. So I have 9 and 5, that's 14, that's balance. And it's, not only is it off balance, but it's 14 inverted. Gabriel's showing me a sword being made. Sort of another callback to Highlander. But he's showing me the part where they're They've got the steel and it's hot and they're hammering it and they dunk it in the cold water. It's tempering the steel. Which makes sense with the number 14 for temperance. But with the energy inverted, it's like... It's like feeling the ice. It's like having snow in your collar and feeling the ice drip down your neck. Um... It's like a work in progress. I mean, you'd think the Nine of Pentacles would be like, okay, everything's in order, it's cool, it's chill. Five, it's like, I'm beating the shit out of this hot stick of metal. What do you want to say about this, though? What does it mean? He's saying it's okay to look at the energies, okay. So Nine of Pentacles, Venus in Virgo, Five of Wands, typically Saturn in Leo, but I've reassigned it Neptune. Sorry, I had to blow my nose there. Um, the Temperance is Sagittarian energy. So what does that mean, though? What do you mean with that? Oh. He's saying the subconscious is being tempered. It's like... Things that you're doing unconsciously, right? I'm in my ego. I am an unawake human being. I'm unconscious. How can I be content when I'm always looking over my shoulder to make sure nobody's coming to get what's mine? It's like throwing the ego in the dunk tank and... Uh, me, I'm I'm fairly convinced that I had some cards of the day that were a similar topic within the last few months about the dunk tank. Uh, I mean, he's just showing me over and over again, like the steam rising out of the water. He's saying the mists of Avalon which is the second reference to that book I've seen this week. 
I have not read that book in a long time. I guess I'm gonna have to read it again. I think I have it. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, so this is what's in the middle of this time switch. He's he's also saying like switches in like lights on, lights off. It's like um the lever on the um on the monster project Frankenstein thing and like Rocky Horror again was the you know where it's it's like it's either frozen or they're singing it's either frozen or they're singing and it's either in the water or you know beating a motherfucker with another motherfucker and it's gonna it's just like keep flipping on and off in this center of this time cluster until the truth the sword is ready to go to battle basically ooh explains why I was thinking about kill bill again the other day all right so let's look at the vertical axis with the <laughs> the knight of swords inverted wow and i was thinking the hanged man with that other those other two cards what do you got here gabriel the ten of pentacles happiness is a warm yes it is Can... i almost hit that note if i didn't detest my own voice i could probably sing pretty good um, but i don't do that on camera so the Knight of Swords inverted, 12 or 1, 10 of Pentacles inverted, 10 breaking down to 1. What is that door song? 9 to 1, 1 to 5, 5 to 1. Five to one. To one in five, no one here gets out alive. Especially in the meat suit. Unfinished business. But here's this sword trying to come in. Right? The, it's like I'm I'm heading into the I'm like I'm in upside down in the tank in my scuba gear trying to suss out the ten pentacles and I is like we're not stopping at nine, we're going all the way to ten, we're completing this. Total twenty two or eleven or thirteen. Internal transformation. This is like the ego transformation. It's it's like um Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Long Kiss Goodnight, it's like, again, with a dunk tank, um, Gina Davis gets stuck in her, her cover ego. And the only way that she comes into her, like, true, like, ass-kicking self is th the guy that's trying to kill her or whatever, so I haven't seen that movie in a long time, um... He keeps dunking her in this ice cold water on this water wheel and he dunks her over and over again until this sort of docile Susie Homemaker ego just kind of dis is tempered out of her and she comes out with this knight of sword shit and you know gets what she's got that's uh, hanging in the universe for her. All right, so we have that. Thing the right way. So let's look at the cross beam here. Let's look at these other angel cards. I was going to put this one over here, but he said put it over here. So we have the two of pentacles, some kind of dis decision. He says weighing the options, he says. And the king of water. Look at this. The knight of swords in the dunk tank. What does he learn? He learns to become the king of that element. It's like, I was born swimming. I can hold my breath for an hour. He's like Tom Hanks at the end of 
of Splash where he's like somehow magically able to breathe in the water. But look at this two of Earth. Okay, consider a more playful approach. This is something we already talked about here. This says open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice, charity work. So this, this idea of the ego transformed by the truth being tempered is like I'm suddenly able to make better decisions instead of having 19 freaking inverted pentacles now I've got two upright that's a huge turnaround right we've like we didn't have to cook the books to get into the black it's like we did that with honest hard work here man so look at this king 14 and 2 which is a tower moment normally but this is also a five broken down into seven, the chariot, which is what we're trying to get out of all these goblins over here with the number seven, too. What are you saying about this, Gabriel? He's like, it's not for me to know, it's for you to find out, but it's he's not saying the phrase correctly. He's like, I, I scrambled it on purpose. I changed the energy of the phrase. Usually it's like, that's for me to know and for you to find out. But he says, it's not for me to know. It's for you to find out. You are the, the king of your emotional environment. And once you've this ego healing has taken place, you are the one who's making the practical decisions. Not being in this impractical decision of I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the washing machine until it works because of these fucking gremlins which is interesting too because in gremlins you're not supposed to get them wet interesting but a stupid okay so let's look at let's look at the challenge card here Mm, the key, the cage, the cage. So now we have eight of pentacles upright. This is the work. Right? There's a rose in there that has to do with like endurance or durability or fidelity or some shit. Um, now what's interesting is that the two of wands usually has keys on it or some kind of dual option some kind of unlocking involved but here it's coming in with pentacles i made the decision for to open up what's in cage number two and what's in there is a rose and to me that's very much what the king of water is raising emotional bloom and how by work three thirty three that's three thrice eleven but the number three has to do with this sort of empress energy i'm birthing something what is it a bloom it's blooming like a blooming onion um, but thirty three breaks down to six which is a healing Right, I'm unlocking the sort of tender blossom in the middle of my my uh, my soul, really, because the ego is like, no, we're not doing that tender-hearted fucking shit. Um, but it's it's in it's a work in progress. Eight of Pentacles. There's that like halfway there, living on a prayer. Gabriel's laughing because he's an angel. Because of the prayers. Uh. Alright, let's look at this other card here. So we have the birds inverted. Seven of pentacles. So there's a lot of pentacles here, man. I mean, a lot of them are inverted, though. Seven of pentacles inverted. This is like impatience. 
but with the birds inverted, it's like the the twelve with the, the little chirpy birdies here. This is like TMZ. Their little hut of doom over here. It's like I no longer have patience for your bullshit. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. I have 12 down here. I have a 7 here. That's 10. I'm done with it. Right? It's like, I'm going to... It's like, I'm glad you got banned from Twitter. Fuck you. <clears throat> the... Gabriel's saying it has to do with the quality of, of the speech the quality of what you manifest. It's like you speak it into being. He says, I'm qualified for this. When, he, when you speak, you create a vibration. It's the root of what spells are. Let me spell it out for you. Let me cast a spell. Essentially, spelling bees are acts of magic, but we don't talk about that. What we do is, is speech, sound, music. There's a vibrational pattern, and when we change what we say, we change what we manifest. So it's not just of like... Uh, uh, was it Stuart Smiley or whatever it is? It's like, I'm great, I'm wonderful, everybody likes me. It's, um... Stuart Smalley? <laughs> I don't remember, it's Al Franken, I think. But, um... It's this idea of... I choose to say that... I choose to speak on, I choose to address what I'm dealing with. Let me start another section. An antsy because I was running out of time. It's like when I address my issues, when I speak of them differently, when I talk about them from another perspective, when I jump in the water and talk underwater and it sounds really weird, when I suck up the helium balloon and and now my voice is really different. It's it's like um it's that thing where where you change the vibration of material through the expulsion of sound and it goes back to that that shifting the energy. Gabriel's talking about, like, people taking him for granted and the fact that he wasn't just there to, like, you know, extra, extra read all about it kind of stuff. He was, like, he's saying, like, a proclamation. He's like, these aren't just phrases, they're human outcries. That's from the Witches of Eastwick. Um... He's 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 giving me these these like chakra chants. He's talking about with the, like the om, like the om. That those sounds are specific to creating and shifting the material world, but the thing is that they resonate in the immaterial world, right? The the higher dimensional world the non-corporeal world. <sighs> Gabriel's saying it's not just, you're not just rubbing your meat. He's talking about like barbecue, like a marinade, like a dry rub. I mean, his seasoning has to do with uh, changing energy too. He's, he's, <sighs> It's got, I think Gabriel has kind of a dirty sense of humor. No, he's laughing. He's like, I'm just changing the energy. <sighs> I 
I'm just trying to sit for a minute and see what else he wants to say. Do you want any more cards? I think, I think I gotta flip over another one of these. Let me shake one out of the deck. I'm gonna get a, another elemental hexagon. So you need to stop giggling in the corner, Gabriel, and wrap this shit up. He says, I'm having fun and playing and being an example. He's telling me that it's like really, he's he's never been comfortable with being a non-playable character. Like how he's always just sort of adjacent to the stories that are going on. Why do you want five cards? Come on, man. Give me a break here. Boron. Order and chaos. Coincidence. It's also the Wheel of Fortune, but it's also a rusty train. Five, shift. We're moving into a newer way of traveling. We're upgrading our ability to shift to move forward. Fifteen, phosphorus. Look at this, fork in the road. Metaphysical world, hell. Interesting, but it's also judgment. Why though? He's he's giving me he's telling me choose your own adventure, but this is also this two of pentacles and this key over here. Right? He, he's saying if you come to a fork in the road, take it. Change the energy. Go somewhere else. Right? This is this is like in the middle of the eight when you go around the loop. You don't always have to go that way. You could go that way. Fuck it. Rainbow Road that shit. Mercury. Mutability Quicksilver. This is also hell. Heckin. Heckin Shifty. So I'm getting this idea that Mercury is the trickster, right? It's like, you could say like, God damn it, these goblins are a pain in the ass. Well, it's like, maybe they just, they're just playing around. They, they were trying to help you learn something. Right? It was like they, they were paid to break into the system to see if the system could be broken into. Then we have Sulfur. Also Hell. Okay, so there's a lot of devil energy here. 15, 80, and 16. Interesting. This is giving me um, chemical plant zone, Sonic and Knuckle. No, Sonic and Sonic 2. Jesus Christ. Chemical plant zone, which is actually my temperance card in my music deck. Chemical pollution. This is the devil card, and the phosphorus was 15. I don't know why I keep trying to tell my brain that 80 breaks down to 15, because it doesn't. It's 5 times 15 plus 5. Now here's the 5 over here, though. And this breaks down to 7, which is that movement again. But I see this rusty train, chemical pollution, right? We're not going... like, industrial waste. We're not doing that anymore. We're not... Um, doing the Mad Hatter thing. We're not, you know, like, my Marie Curie, you look radiant today. We're not doing that. You know, we're, we're not mutating in a way that pollutes and degrades anymore. We're choosing a different path that pulls it upwards. Are you done? What's my time? You got 12 minutes left, Gabriel. What else do you want to say? I think he wants a charm. He says, charming, isn't it? You heard it first here, folks. Archangel Gabriel is the inventor of the dad joke. So we have the frying pan. I don't know where that's going to be in focus. But the frying pan. I have the books here. Geometry, history. 
right? We're leaving that in the past. Is it living in the past? Is that what that Jethro Tull song is? Which is interesting because Jethro Tull is my Eight of Pentacles teacher. Although when I try to think of it, I'm getting Elton John because I listened to that album yesterday. Okay, so inverted the cassowary. Leftover dinosaur. This is giving me that inverted five of wands, right? Because the cassowary will fuck you up. They will kick your guts into next week. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. Okay, so they have the egg. The egg was inverted, right? The cassowary egg, right? It's it's like we're not it's not laying the same egg as it was before. Oh, right here with the sulfur too, right? It's a rotten egg. We're cooking up something new. I also got like we're cooking the books. I'm cooking the books. But why? Why are we cooking the books? Why isn't why is it not adding up? Why are you cooking the books? Oh, he's saying I've got a hot new take on history. This is better than breakfast. Scrambled eggs. Okay, he's talking about taking something that was there and rearranging the energy pattern. Scrambled eggs. Rearranging the, the resonance changes the DNA. Scrambled eggs. History and geometry. The form, geometry, historically, is being cooked. It's being scrambled into something that's less aggressive. That's where the shift is propulsive instead of regressive. Is that it? Are you done? He says Elvis has left the building. He's like pretending like he's all sweaty from stage. You know, you know what's weird though is like I don't even know like usually you see angels in robes and you're like Maybe they have knees if they're sitting, but they don't generally have legs, and it's just kind of weird to see an angel with the the wings all akimbo with tight leather pants on. And gold boots. He just changed his footwear. He's like, yeah, I'm not doing the sandals. I got gold boots. He's really adamant about the gold boots. He says, see, I'm changing the energy. And I was like, that doesn't look like gold. He's like, no, I'm just kidding. They're copper toes, copper boots, silver boots. It's like, I've got some shit kicking to do, he says. What else? What is he doing? How much time have I got? All right, what else are you doing? He says, I'm packing up my gear. Like he's taking down a microphone. And he's, he's like overacting the whole thing because he's trying to reiterate this point of, of being playful. Right? He's like, I'm a pantomime rock and roll musician. But he says it's not that different from what I'm really doing. I'm shifting the energy. I'm creating something different with the sound that I'm putting out. And he says that's very rock and roll. And he says that it's useful because of the... 
he, he's saying it's useful because of the androgyny in rock and roll because it's allowing the masculine and the feminine and the other dualities and and I am clarifying like bracket like uh, parentheses polarity saying it's allowing the dualities to move more freely so that more recombinant patterns are available right it's like we're, we're not just like we're not just doing uh it's like we're not just doing paneling we're doing tiles and carpets too there's more more options so that if you know if if the energy isn't flowing you can move to another track it's there isn't there's fewer limitations in the creative force which might seem daunting because there's more options but when you flow naturally instead of in a bound way you where's that card hold up there buddy of course it's like gonna be less when you flow more in the un, like with the more options to flow in where you need to it actually narrows the pathway by allowing more solutions to get there right it's like hey as long as you your proof works we're not going to mark you down because it's not different than the one the teacher told you all right i think he's done are you done he says i told you i'm picking up my gear i feel like you're i feel like you're those one of those people that always has to have the last word he's like no i don't Oh, oh, come on, man. He just pulled the speaker on the plug on the guitar and gave me a lot of feedback. That's just rude, buddy. Come on, man. It hurt my ear balls. Okay, so if you want to get a personal reading, I do that. Is that let me just not have that in focus. So uh, the list of readings I have is going to be in the description box below this video. Um... You can email me for that too, the cat came back at camp at gmail.com. If you'd like to contribute to my channel, help keep this running, that's PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. If you'd like to get something for donation money instead of just throwing money at me, which you're more than welcome to do, I have prints and merch on Cafe Press and Deviant Art. I have actual art items on Etsy. Coupon code 3 star 17 will get you 17% off your purchase of three or more items. I have coloring books. On Amazon, I have the Energy Forms, Draco Forms, Lantern is Dark Poetry, that's Kindle or Paperback. Um, all this stuff is through the link tree. Um, I am going to have this for sale eventually, this drawing. Uh, not quite sure when that's going to be. I'm going to set him up for prints, and I think I'm going to put him on Etsy. We'll see. Uriel's up on Etsy, and then there's a different ver. Oh, okay, I see why. I'm not supposed to put him on Etsy until the other image of him on Etsy sells. So, I, um, I can put him up as prints on Deviant Art, and then, um, once the Archangel canvas board set with Gabriel in itself, then he says, um, this can go up on Etsy. If you are serious, severely interested in having him before then, um, you can email me. He's going to be like 150 bucks at least. Um, but in the meantime, Uriel's for sale. The Archangel canvas boards are for sale. And then there'll be prints available too. Um, all right, yes, so it's Gabriel, and there's me. 
Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlists tab, my discussion tab, and stay groovy, and we'll see you later. Bye!